Good morning to you, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements here from Santa Monica, California, United States. Saturday, March 13, 2021. Um, uh, I'm back to give a series of talks uh, for the remainder of the month. Uh, in support, unequivocal support, for the extraordinarily brave women and men and boys and girls in Myanmar, Burma, at this very moment. I want to say traumatized, outraged, and that's true. But my heart is in the inexplicable, extraordinary expression of courage and not ordinary courage, ethically inspired courage, non-violently ethically inspired bravery for a purpose, freedom, the oxygen of existence for all living creatures. And I want to thank you straight out, people of Myanmar, the freedom loving people of Burma for showing us here on the outside, and I am on the outside, it's like watching a movie from a seat and thinking that in some way I'm in the movie, but I'm not. I'm watching a very evil expression of Jurassic Park from my safe haven seat, and there is no way that I can understand the intimacy, the dimensionality of what you're living with in the reality of your own country. So I honor that distinction. And I want to say from where I sit, and I know millions of people around the world feel the same, increasing by the minute, by the second. Your bravery, your ethical bravery, your conscience in action, your revolution of the spirit, your spring revolution, call it what you will, an expression of human consciousness motivated by the courage to care for things larger than your own self-interest. You care about the sanctity of life. You care about the freedom of the future. You care about my own well-being by putting it all on the line the way you have and the way that you do. I want to start today by honoring you from my heart to yours. Thank you for showing us the light of an inspired expression of caring for things equal to my own life and put it all on the line for the future of freedom from my heart to yours. Thank you. I want to say I'm lost for words. I think I have too many words and probably too many words that shouldn't even be expressed, but I'm blunt, perhaps autistic. Who knows exactly the, the reasons why I don't give a damn what people think of me and exactly what you're doing over there. You're putting it all on the line in the whole world. The civilized so-called world, the freedom of the world, the leaders of the free world. I have to say it straight out. Impotent is not accurate. Pathetic is getting closer to it. Expected how in the fuck can you behave in the way you do other than your mainlining profit and privilege and supremacy and distance and apathy and you're calling it an adequate response to a travesty. Myanmar is undergoing a terrorist attack. Be clear about it. The news is reporting it infinite amount of digital media is coming out of Burma. We are seeing firsthand the horror upon horror of a military that has gone rogue, a brutal group of gangsters driven by the evil gene of ignorance, greed, fear, and obedience to a totalitarian master called Ma Sak. Ming Online, the former senior general of the Tamada. He is no longer in the military. He is a bona fide 
evil gangster, a terrorist, Ma Sac, State Administration Council. We should know that designation as the most appropriate label for the latest designation of a terrorist group on our precious planet Earth, threatening freedom everywhere. Ma Sac, equal to Osama bin Laden, Paul Pot, Khmer Rouge, Boko Haram. We should become familiar with the reality of what's happening in Burma and stop pretending leaders around the world. I want to say, where are you? But that kind of, you know, typical reactionary scolding doesn't seem to get the point across. It seems that most leaders around the world at this point are satisfied with press releases and somewhat stern statements and this idea of sanctions, withdrawing money, travel, and arms in some way is an adequate response to the terror of the people at this very moment. I can tell you this, I'm not naive. If I were in a position of power as a leader, there would be an unequivocal response immediately, days ago, right now, the Nimitz or the Roosevelt in the Andaman Sea, and I can guarantee you, I even thought about it today, sharing my innermost thoughts, I even thought about the possibility of armed intervention, isolating Napido, especially Mossack's mansion, and take out Netanyahu-like Command Central. What are we waiting for? More death, more terror, more trauma? What is behind this madness, right? Where are you, free leaders? Where are you, Biden, Trudeau? Where are you, G7? Hello? Hello? What is moving you? Protocol? Diplomacy? It's called bullshit. Act. A-C-T. In the meanwhile, everyone listening to this, it's not my words, it's your actions. We are force multipliers. The more that we can forward our thoughts digitally, the more we are pretending not to pretend. We are taking the veneer of distance away from the people in Burma. We are participating in their spring revolution. May I encourage you all throughout this talk, should you be motivated, be motivated. Why just sit there and watch? Press share. Include a statement. Share as far as sharing could go over and over and over again. The people of Burma are bleeding, dying. They're standing up night and day to Ma Sac. So, so frustrating. However, this is on the outside. I was thinking this morning, having been a long time citizen, if you will, de facto citizen of Myanmar, Burma, a former Buddhist monk, a friend of the country, a friend of Do Aung San Suu Kyi and U Tianu and Wu Wen Tin and U Wen Tain and U Wei Meng and so many boys and girls and men and women who have, you know, spent time with me to talk to me about the trauma, the struggle, the outrage of living under torture in the country and also in the gulags, an insane prison. How many other prisons around the country? I've heard stories from these girls and boys, what they endured to bring the radiance of freedom nonviolently to the future of their country. And here we are today, March 13, 2021, and an entire new generation of freedom fighters are on the streets or in the homes all throughout the country. And Mossack is bewildered. How do we say bewildered? Because look at the increase in evil. Stating the obvious, you know, I don't want to be a kind of journalist outside talking about the darkness and the light. I don't want to be an analyst. I want to evoke the passions of engagement. I'm not a scholar activist, not even an activist. This is a lover of a broader paradigm called democracy and freedom. We're all children together. We're all family together. Where is this global citizen story? When in need, I disappear. When I can 
use you for my own need, I appear. Hello, global citizens are being terrorized. This is not a normal coup d'etat. This is a serial terrorist killing going on in Myanmar. Crimes against humanity, what does that mean? Murder unveiled, indiscriminate killing, assassinations, boys and girls being shot from a distance. How can we as civilized countries sleep, operate, talk, buy, day trade, meditate, be mindful of our fucking orgasm, do Tantra, and still sleep at night when our brothers and sisters in freedom and democracy, it's not some distant Southeast Asian nation, these are fellow sister human beings. We are a species together of oxygen and blood and principles called the universality of declaration of human rights. That is the blueprint of our dignity and it is under terrorist threat at this very moment in Burma. When I was in the monastery, I was thinking, just to offer some other perspective than me ranting, which is, I was blessed to be under the guidance of the late Venerable Mahasi Sayadaw and his successor, Sayadaw Upandita, and a number of other leading Maha Sayadaws uh, at the Mahasi Thathanayekta in Yangon. Usujata was a amazing teacher and a mentor and a friend, um, Uzawana, Ujanaka, genius. And I remember with Mahasi Seda and Seda Upandita during my own meditative practice, but also being blessed to be able to sit in with these extraordinary mind savants, not Buddhist per se, yes, that too. But what attracted me to them and what attracted me primarily to Burma was the, the prioritization of consciousness as primary over form, over materiality, over profit, over commerce. It wasn't a denigration of the outer, but it was the empowerment of the inner and the radiance of knowing consciousness as that which informs speech, thought, action, and outer forms. How we do what we do, why we do what we do, not just simply doing to do in order to just have the outside. Obviously, it's not just about form and mansion and cars and capital and profit. It's about how we do things. And I really saw that the culture of Burma empowered consciousness for me over my own materialistic culture, which although I was brought up a Christian and had a very deep regard for Jesus and Christ and God, but the materialism was a death sentence for me. I just couldn't think that sucking a plastic popsicle was in any way succulent, to state the obvious. Burma inverted that. And meditation showed me with these teachers the power of deliberately choosing states of mind, SOMs, states of consciousness, SOCs, Chaitasikas in the Pali language. I never really had an understanding of the power of understanding states of mind. Now, those of you who have meditated and many within the civil disobedience movement in Myanmar at this moment will have been and perhaps understand the role of satipatthana or vipassana or the power of mindfulness or simply the metaphor of meditation, which to me means the study of human consciousness at the six sense doors, the eye, the ear, the nose, the body, the tongue, the mind, and studying the machinations of consciousness and how one feels inside and what one does through the senses outside. Know what you do was the mantra within the monastery. 
And I remember so distinctly learning that all of us think different thoughts. And most people identify with thought and the content of thought to think that that thought is actually who they are. And if you have aberrant thoughts or really you know, greedy thoughts or addictive thoughts, next thing you know, that that thought you think that you need to think, you believe that thought and you act out through that thought and you cannot see the distinction between the thought and you. Meditation teaches you that you don't need to believe your thoughts. Now, just an aside here, obviously that if Mossack and the so-called other terrorists and the police women and men in Burma right now terrorizing the people, if they could see their thinking as aberrant, they would see that they're obedient to an indoctrination. They're not aware of one that indoctrination and what is the state of mind that motivates that level of blind servitude to a behavior that denigrates other people and at the same time denigrates them and welcome to dictatorship, welcome to totalitarianism. It's the absence of Dhamma, it's the absence of understanding consciousness. And so in Myanmar today, in Burma today, we see a very epic black and white circumstance a totalitarian gangster driven by the blindness of obedience dictating to his fellow gangsters and terrorists to do that which I say or else. And so based upon that blind obedience, they do things in the name of what they think is right and just, killing their own family members called fellow citizens of Burma. That blind obedience is nothing other than a deliberate stupidity, an indoctrination. That's a key word that and you see in meditative circles, people who come from culture, they're indoctrinated in their own thinking. And yet if you stop and just decathex and just open your mind and begin to see a thought, oh my God, a thought for a thought. Oh, that's anger. I don't have to believe that anger to be an appropriate feeling towards that individual. And you begin to see that you exercise some control over your own thinking process. And we called it tracing back the radiance to one's own SOM, one's own state of mind. And I found Dhamma intelligence to be the operative distinction between someone indoctrinated and someone who is in freedom. Someone who is in the path of liberation versus the path of deliberate indoctrination. They could see their state of mind. Oh my goodness. I don't have to believe that thought to be an appropriate thought to follow. Now, if everyone in the gangster of the former Thamada under Masak were to begin to see their indoctrination, and I've seen the videos, it's unbelievable to see how deliberate they go out with their cruelty to hunt human beings that turn lights on in apartment buildings, to shoot boys and girls that their own children go to school with, through the head and the neck and the lungs, terrorizing the people as if there's a certain perverse joy in that. That is nothing other than terrorism. Pause, Alan. I was in Yugoslavia for the final year of their ethnic cleansing that took many thousands of people's lives. We know that. It ended in a three-way bloodbath. And eventually a thing came out of that called the Peyton, uh, the Dayton Peace Accord. And you had essentially bona fide terrorists, serial killers around a table negotiating peace for the future of the people. Myanmar and Burma and Masak and all the various ethnic groups in Burma, do we want to end up at the end of a six, seven, eight way Iraq-like, Libya-like, Afghanistan-like, Yemen-like, Bosnia-like? Do we want to end up after all that's said and done with an ethnic cleansing or genocides or overlapping genocides at a peace table in Naypyidaw and talk about how to civilize the country again? Are, are you, Masak, are you that stupid 
Don't you see the future of the country? Don't you see that what you're doing is leading towards your own denigration and the denigration of your people? How to get to that Dayton Peace Accord now? thinking about that. Armed intervention to put the terrorist in place. The criminal court in The Hague putting that five to ten million dollar bounty on Mossack. A Netanyahu group from a distance that takes out the leader. An inner coup around Ming Online that puts him under house arrest, he and Tan Shui. I mean, fantasies, beliefs. But what really is a practical solution? If I were on the ground, what would I be thinking? How could I support my outrage, my trauma, risking every minute of my day? Should I go out onto the streets and light candles? What does it mean to isolate the regime? How to take every bit of time and energy and money away from Mossack? Yes, all these things are important. Back in 1960, Nelson Mandela, the, you know, one of the young leaders of the ANC, began to see the terrorist attack of the white apartheid regime in South Africa. And after deep deliberation, you can read in A Long Walk to Freedom that Mandela and cohorts decided to move from nonviolence to selected guerrilla war tactics. Are you advocating that? I thought about it long and hard. What would I do? That's not really what's mattering here, what I would do. But I think everything at this point is an appropriate consideration to study history and look at the great minds and how they considered how to win the war on terrorism and with an entity like Mossack who is absolutely unwilling to talk, to negotiate, to, to relent to ASEAN to the G7, to America, to the United Nations. They're basically saying to the free world, fuck you. Hear it loud and clear. Every other interpretation is bullshit. It's a big fuck you to ASEAN. It's a big fuck you to the United Nations. What we're doing is for the betterment of the people, for the country. That's called gaslighting. That's called bullshit. And you don't negotiate with a serial killer unless he's got your wife and your husband and your children hostage. And then you're forced to negotiate. And that's the situation we're in right now. We are forced to negotiate with the terrorist group Ma Sac, Ming Online State Administration Council, the acronym Ma Sac, Boko Haram, Khmer Rouge, ISIS, ISIL. Let's get it through our head. How do you negotiate with bin Laden before those planes crash down in New York City? Do you take him out or do you negotiate? Sanction him? Take the gas from those planes. How do you do it? Now, if I were a leader right now, I'd be looking at Mossack as a terrorist threat to the world because right in there, I'm not going to get into this today, but China, China. I'm not into demonizing China. I'm sorry to digress here. They, they I should say, the genocidal premier dictator Xi Jinping and his 90 million communist cyborgs. That's a different entity than the 1.4 billion freedom-loving people of China who've never enjoyed a day of freedom in their life under the dictatorship of Xi Jinping. But be sure, we're in a global war right now on multiple fronts. Am I a hawk? No, I'm a super hawk. I'm a realist. The world is under threat 
by the genocidal premier Xi Jinping. Burma is under threat by the genocidal terrorist Ma Sak, and they're intimately connected. How do I know that? Look at their weapons. Look at their resources and where the money is going. Look at that 2,000 mile pipeline and gas line going from the Andaman Sea, the Bay of Bengal, Rakhine State, think Rohingya, think of Yunnan province and southern China, all that oil. People have talked about, you know, China doesn't want to deal with the internal affairs of Myanmar, and someone made the statement, what about if we blew up the pipeline? Would that just be an internal affair of Myanmar? My sense is, looking at Mandela, everything is on the table right now. Why? Because of the impotence, the coll no, not imp the collusion with terrorism by the West, the collusion with terrorism and murder and assassination with ASEAN and Masak. How else do you look at it? A press release as response to murder and rape? <laughs> Spare me. Call it like it is. So where do we go from here? <clears throat> I say right now it's important and I'm going to speak about it. I'm going to bring up Nelson Mandela's turn from nonviolence to selected guerrilla tactics. I'm not advocating that. I'm just basically wanting to speak about it. I'm also going to not pretend that what the United Nations, the United States, Canada, the EU, and ASEAN is doing in any way is good. I call it collusion with terrorism and murder and genocide. It's, it's just unthinkable. Is there a solution? Is there an action that would be more appropriate? Yeah, hello. If someone were breaking into my house and raping my daughter, I would not want a press release that we don't do things in that person's home. If we're a global family and you pretend to be globalists and global citizens, Burma is my home. Burma is your home. There are kids and family, our wives, dogs, Sun Tzu Chi's, our mother. Hello, where are you? Stop pretending. Masak is a terrorist group. Okay, get practical, Alan. Okay, what's a practical response right now to stop the murder? We can't exist in isolation. We do our best to try. Lockdowns and masks and the porno politics of, you know, weaponized panic. It's almost impossible today to discern what is true and what is a lie. We're under the deep, you know, global movement of Orwellianism in 1984. These aren't even cliches anymore. I do fear for myself and my friends and my family and my fellow inhabitants that we're soon going to be nothing other than slaves and cyborgs and transhumanistic, you know, machinations of the, the global oligarchical elites. That's not conspiratorial. Davos, Beijing, Wall Street, Silicon Valley, these are all becoming very discernible realities. There is a threat right now, and Masak understands that we can belong to the top elites. Now, since we're not going to seemingly invade and attack or to send a precision guided missile into Ming Online's mind, and obliterate his delusion. There's no Buddha right now coming to our rescue. A delegation of artists, religious savants, great leaders from not ASEAN alone, from around the world, isolate Ma Sak and say, listen, you know, this is 2021. We're going to collectively rise up into a democratic voice called a delegation with a point. 
which means we're going to meet you where you're not willing to look. We're not going to meet you with a missile or a gun. We're going to put words to our sanctions. We're going to basically invite you to bring us to Naypyidaw as a group of maybe a hundred leaders, diverse leaders, including someone from China, okay, someone from Russia, okay, but mostly from the United Nations and democratic free countries around the world, including religious leaders of all faiths, bring them to Naypyidaw and let's see a discussion with Ma Sack and his fellow terrorists talk to this delegation like we did in Yugoslavia at the Dayton Peace Accord. Okay, let's not wait for a genocide to conclude with thousands of murders and rapes. Intervene with this delegation now. Put it together. Someone out there Screw Bono and Geldof. We don't need a global concert right now to, you know, raise consciousness. We need leaders to raise their conscience, their respect, their diplomacy, their dignity, and call it conscience in action. Put minds on the ground in Naypyidaw, the capital and the home of the terrorist group Masak. Put that delegation together. I'll be happy to join you as a friend of Burma, a friend of Do Aung San Suu Kyi's, a friend of the people. And let's hear Ma Sack's reasoning for what he is doing. And let's have a team of crack mediators people who hear both sides of the story and let mediation, dialogue, the absence of violence. Remember, the ethos of Do Aung San Suu Kyi, and few people really get, she was the champion of dialogue, talk, the feminine inspired wisdom of put down your fist Put down your gun. Let's talk about our differences. That is called nonviolence in action. Dasu is not here today. She is the champion of the nonviolent, feminine inspired approach of dialogue over death and destruction and domination. She is the voice to confront terrorism with the human mind the voice, the power of the woman. And I say to free leaders around the world, bring that delegation dedicated to the power of dialogue, frank talk, and have Ming Online, Ma Sack, call off the war on the people for the period of time that delega the delegation is in Naypyidaw, and release videos, release transcripts, let the world in on the truth so that that delegation is also held accountable by the citizens of democracies around the world. Let us watch global governments in acute activist action. Now, if we can't do that, the Dhamma of delegation, if we can't do that, <laughs> I say the next action is to do as Nelson Mandela, the great freedom fighter of our era, is to move from being mercilessly murdered into deliberate acts of guerrilla war tactics. And I think that the freedom level delegation of the world should know that there is an intermediary step between direct military intervention, the war of words and sanctions, and putting consciousness, just as we do in courts of justice, 
People show up and talk with lawyers and mediators. They talk it through the best they can. They don't bring guns into the courtroom. That's what Mossack is doing. They're bringing guns to their enforcement of terrorist justice. To conclude, I call upon all freedom-loving leaders of the world. I call upon the United Nations. I call upon all organizations, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty, every organization in the world concerned with diplomacy, nonviolence, freedom of speech and thought, the sanctity of the future of life, democracy, all the Nobel laureate men and women in all the various categories. Overcome whatever is needed. Put that delegation into process immediately. Call upon Mossack right now and say, are you willing to meet with this selected delegation? Tell us who you feel should belong to this delegation. You have that right. And we will agree upon a date to fly into Napido with our own protective force around it and meet you there in the parliament that is vacated because of your terrorism. And there we will sit and convene in those empty five-star hotels in Napido until we come to a solution just like the good people at Dayton Peace Accord did to end a three-way genocide that was virtually, stupidly unnecessary, yet the free world watched it on television. Why do you think the good people of Bosnia and Sarajevo commemorated the absence of conscience by free leaders with putting up canned beef with the UN insignia on it in downtown Sarajevo, mocking the inadequacy, the impotence, the collusion with genocide. Is that what freedom means when you're in power? Collusion with ethnic cleansing? Collusion with terrorism? What do we have to do? Put ayahuasca in your drink? What do we have to do? Put MDMA in your mind to awaken you beyond the sluggishness of your defense systems? Snap out of it. You're a leader. You're a president. You're a prime minister. You're an ambassador. Everywhere in the world, ambassadors worldwide, all on the ground in Myanmar, cry out delegation, Dhamma delegation, multi-faith delegation, democracy delegation to intervene in Mossack's ongoing, escalating terrorism of Burma. Closing point. I remember when I was in the monastery in my first year as a monk in Burma. Although I had been to the country as a lay person in 1977, it wasn't until 1979 that I entered the country as a monk ordained with Mahasi Sedo in New York City as a Samanera and came into the country on a one-way ticket with a non-extendable seven-day visa, hoping that I could practice with Mahasi Daido with seven days. It meant that much to me. And at the end of those seven days, Nay Win, the dictator, granted me an extension to stay as a monk. Nay Win is the man who incarcerated the first prime minister of Burma. <clears throat> we all know the story of Unu's incarceration. Nay Win went on to terrorize the people, steal from the people, imprison the people. He went on to teach the military blind obedience to the authority of totalitarianism. They went from an independent army founded by Da Aung San Suu Kyi's father, Aung San as a young man, to be an independent freedom-fighting organization. 
a dignified body to protect the people, not to terrorize them. Aung San and Ne Win were friends, colleagues, and part of the original group of 30. One went evil, one was assassinated, who was profoundly awake. His incarnation were the people. He had a son and daughter. She is imprisoned right now. Ne Win passed on his legacy of terrorism to a successor. Tan Shui and others. And Tan Shui is Masak, Ming Online's Ne Win. Masak does nothing without Big Brother Tan Shui, the prince, the king of darkness in Myanmar. Be sure of it. We need to understand there is a way to talk to this type of dictatorship that's really frank. I remember in that monastery, a man came who had been in Cambodia. He was a social worker, a volunteer. And he came to the monastery and I remember talking to him and I asked him, where have you come from? And he said, I've just come from Cambodia on the border. And I said, what did you see? I said, I saw hundreds of thousands of Cambodian refugees fleeing murder, persecution, terrorism, beheadings, and rapes. And I was so overwhelmed by what I saw, I broke down at the horror of someone who was talking about this man named Paul Pot, who had gone on an ongoing rampage of genocide that ended up in what we've known as the killing fields of Cambodia. And that was just what, four, five hundred, six hundred miles from Rangoon at the time. I remember the Vietnam War, the Cambodian genocide, and it scared me that it was all so close. Who would ever imagine that it's now in Burma? I've said it many times, it's no pride to say it. In 1990, I wrote the book, Burma, the Next Killing Fields, with a question mark, based upon that very encounter with that social worker back in 79. We all know the Rohingya crisis. We all know what's happened in the ethnic minorities. The ongoing terrorizing of the people of Burma, the Buddhists, the Jews, the Catholic, the Christians, the Muslims. Masak has shown itself to be the ongoing iteration of Ne Win's dark evil, mafia, gangster, terrorist organization that broke ranks with General Aung San's dignity a military beholding to the people. It's archetypal, it's black and white. I remember going back into my meditation, more and more empowered to study my own mind. How could we ever overcome the evil forces of existence? Genocides, wars, rapes. How do you personalize these things? And if you do, you go crazy with trauma and torture. What does compassion look like in the face of genocide and terrorism? How to act? How are these boys and girls facing another day to confront Masak on the streets of Rangoon, Monoa, and Mandalay, all over the country? The bravery. Not long after that, there was a massive fire not far from the monastery and all of us as nuns and monks could smell the fumes. And the villages back then were only made out of thatched and palm leaves and wood. And all of a sudden we're looking out over the walls of the monastery because it's rolling and we can see these massive flames coming towards the monastery in all directions. And here we were as monks and nuns in the sanctity 
of this oasis of sanity within Myanmar, governed by Ne Win, Tan Shui's father, and Ma Sak's grandson. We're normally disconnected from politics, but now the fires were coming to engulf us. And I remember the head monks talking to us, we must put out the flames. And I remember that meditation became secondary. No, it didn't become secondary. They told us to bring our meditation to putting out the fire. How genius is that? So as nuns and monks, we saw these massive trees exploding, crackling, and we did what we could to put out fire in the monastery and flames and embers. And we were able to save the Mahasi Tathanayekta from burning. But most of the villages and much of the township was lost. Burma is under fire of terrorism, just like Cambodia was under Pol Pot. Do not wait for another Yugoslavia. Do not wait for a televised ethnic cleansing. Do not wait for another repeat of what happened with the Rohingya. Do not wait for what's going down in Mon State and Kachin State and Chin State. Do not wait any longer, free world. Bring in the next iteration of democracy in action. Delegation like the Dayton Peace Accord. Call it the democracy dialogue delegation. Bring it to Napito. Put it on the global table. You're invited, sir, to invite anyone you want. What is the date? We want to be there for two weeks to talk about this. And at the end of it, we will decide what the outcome is. A negotiated settlement. We will not come unless you stop killing the people and free everyone right now. Why can't you do that, UN? Why can't you do that, Biden? Why can't you do that, Trudeau? Otherwise, you are colluding with terrorism, and that's called colluding with murder and rape. And I would say you are worthless as a leader. Show the people of Burma who you really are. Send in this democracy delegation of dialogue. Honor Da Aung San Suu Kyi. Honor the president. Honor 11 straight years, 32 straight years of struggle for freedom and democracy in that country. All these boys and girls in hiding, give them hope. Bring your democracy to the table in Napidaw. How is that as an intermediary intervention rather than weapons and missiles? And let's see what happens at the end of that delegation. And give Ming Online a chance and his chosen men and women to speak their mind and bring in a crack group of mediators. And one of those mediators or two of them can be from China but there's no impartiality. We are coming to a solution. Burma will be a democratic country. When will you act? Put out the fire. No place is safe. The globe is at stake. Act now. I'll see you tomorrow at 9.30. Thank you.